What is up guys? New year, new caucus here. Thank you so much for stopping by. And today, we are going to be taking a look at the 10 most used legendary weapons within PvE for Destiny 2. The Beyond Light expansion has been here for a while. All of the announced weapons are out and attainable and people have had ample time to attain them. So we are firmly set within the current meta and it's a great time to look at which weapons are working and which aren't. And so, let's get started. Now, first things first, this data is coming from destinytracker.com, and there's three stats we're going to look at. Firstly, we have the usage percentage, which is how we're ranking these weapons, then we have the percent of total kills, and then the percent of total headshots. And there's some interesting relationships between these stats. A weapon might see a ton of usage, but if it's only used in boss DPS, it'll have a pretty low percent of kills. On the opposite side, there might be a weapon that's used for ad clearing all the time and has tons of kills, but doesn't see that much play in relationship to other weapons. So pay attention to those numbers. All right, now let's get started here with number 10. And here, we actually have the Commemoration Legendary Machine Gun from the Deep Stone Crypt Raid. By the way, for all of these weapons, I'm gonna be showing off my best rolls with these guns. These are what you're gonna be seeing in the background gameplay being used. And uh, yeah, I got the utter, utter god roll for the Commemoration for PvE, which is Reconstruction plus Rampage and Extended Mag. This can give you 145 rounds in the magazine, all boosted with the damage increase that Rampage provides, is really not a surprise that this weapon comes in on this list, especially because the Deepstone Crypt Raid is a little bit more accessible this year, and you can actually farm for the weapons you want thanks to the chest at the end where you can spend your spoils on raid loot. But seriously, the Commemoration is arguably the best legendary machine gun in Destiny 2 right now, so no wonder people have taken a liking to it. Moving on from there, at the number 9 slot, we have the Posterity Legendary Hand Cannon. This is another Deep Stone Crypt raid weapon, and like the Commemoration, this is capable of some absurd magazine numbers. In fact, I also have the utter PvE god roll for that, because it's the same as the Commemoration. Extended Mag plus Reconstruction and Rampage. With this hand cannon and this roll, if you put on the backup mag mod, you can get to 39 rounds in the magazine. 39. Most auto rifles can't even get that. And you have a hand cannon that's capable of that. That's absolutely insane. Couple that with the fact that 180s received some buffs this season. Not only did they get nearly a 40% magazine size buff, which is kind of how that insane 40 round mag is possible, but they also got a pretty substantial range buff as well. They're at a pretty decent position within PvE, and this is arguably the best 184 PvE in the entire game. Again, combine that with the accessibility of the Deep Zone Crypt we talked about earlier, and it's not a surprise to see this coming in on this list. But it's time to move on from there to the number eight slot. And here we have the Cold Front Legendary Kinetic Hand Cannon. I am somewhat surprised to see this on this list because the Cold Front was introduced rather recently with the arrival of the Dawning. Now it's possible people have been using their Cold Fronts from the previous year of the Dawning, but I would say that the vast majority of people are using the new one. And the new one has some decent rolls, with the one standing out being the ability to get Dragonfly. This is actually the only kinetic weapon in the game that could spawn with Dragonfly. So people are clearly gravitating towards that special unique weapon and using it quite a bit. Here's the interesting part. There's a bit of controversy around this weapon because it's not supposed to spawn with Dragonfly and Bungie has actually come out and said that they're looking into this weapon, which means if they change this role, if they take Dragonfly off, they are neutering the number eight most used legendary weapon in the entire game, and a huge amount of people will be upset by that, so that's pretty darn crazy. 
However, it is time to move on from there to the number seven slot. And here we have the seventh Seraph Carbine Legendary Kinetic Auto Rifle. I am extremely surprised to see this here. Mine has sat in my vault basically until I brought it out to make this video. I have not seen this thing in quite a while, but to be honest, I forgot how good this was. And the reason this is on the list is because this is one of only two kinetic Seraph weapons. So they can produce war mine cells. If you want to produce war mine cells and use a kinetic weapon, your only other option is the seventh Seraph revolver hand cannon. And that is not as easy to use as this thing and frankly doesn't have that amazing of rolls. I mean, the 7th Seraph Carbine is an auto rifle that can get rampage. That's pretty good just on its own. But that's combined with the fact that Warmind Cells are some of the most powerful things in the entire game. And certain Warmind Cell mods are cracked out of their minds and essential for high level content. So no wonder you're seeing this on the list. Moving on from there, at the number six slot, we have the trusty Legendary Energy Scout Rifle. This is also from the Deepstone Crypt Raid, and I'm kind of surprised to see it here because I think it's great in PvP, but I think there's a lot better options in PvE for most activities. And I was kind of thinking, like, why are that many people using this thing? And then it hit me. Well, although I think there are better options for a lot of normal activities out there, when we're talking about activities involving champions like Nightfalls, Lost Sectors, as well as higher level Empire Hunts, it becomes clear why this thing is seeing a ton of play. Firstly, it's a scout rifle, which means you can use overload scout rifle rounds and overload champions are everywhere. Oh my goodness, I'm pretty sure like every activity involving champions has overload champions. That's combined with the fact that this is solar and the fallen is kind of the featured enemy type this season. Most nightfalls will feature fallen. Most lost sectors feature fallen. Empire hunts, a lot of fallen. What do fallen have a lot of? Shanks. What element are shanks shields? Solar. So this weapon kind of fits in perfectly to a lot of builds trying to go through that higher level content. And that's why I think you see it on this list, combined with the fact that it is just a fantastic weapon overall, arguably the best PvE scout rifle. But in the number five slot, we have the first in last out legendary shotgun. So this is a slug shotgun. Slug shotguns got a pretty substantial buff not too long ago. And this weapon you'll notice high usage, extremely low kills. And that's because this is a boss DPS monster. The high raw damage of slugs combined with the fact that this can get auto loading holster as well as vorpal weapon for just more damage against bosses means that it just slaps in the damage department and it's become a mainstay in certain damage phases. Uh, the one that comes to mind is the final encounter of the Deepstone Crypt Raid. Most people are running Philos combined with another slug shotgun. So this weapon has proven itself in the highest levels of content. And if it's good for damaging the final boss of a raid, obviously it's gonna be great at damaging enemies in strikes and other normal activities, killing champions. Vorpal does work against them. So just a great, great, damage outputting weapon overall. That's why you see it on the list. But moving on from there, at the number four slot, we have the Gnawing Hunger Legendary Energy Auto Rifle. So why is this weapon on the list? Because it can't produce war mine cells. It mostly comes from the previous season. Well, the reason is simply because it's cracked and you will not find a current auto rifle that's capable of getting even close to how good of rolls the gnawing hunger can get. If you did get the curated roll, which is what I have, overflow plus rampage is 
unbelievable, but there's a lot of great random rolls too. Subsistence actually works fantastic on this weapon because its ammo reserves are so big, subsistence doesn't impact them very much. You can get that combined with Rampage. You can get Kill Clip with this thing. It's just such a good overall weapon for a variety of content. And the 600 rounds per minute archetype, which this belongs to, is just so suited for PvE play. It has relatively decent range, so you can engage enemies at medium, even longer ranges pretty efficiently, but it's also fantastic at close quarters if you're getting swarmed. And again, we didn't really get a lot of other great autos, really the only one I'm thinking of this season was the Europa one that can't get anywhere near as good of rolls as the Gnawing Hunger. So that's why you're seeing it still being utilized as much as it is. But it's time to move on from there to the number three slot. And here we have the Aikilos SMG Legendary Energy Submachine Gun. No wonder to see it here. In fact, the only surprising thing is that it's not higher on this list. We talked about Warmind Cells being an important feature in why the 7th Seraph Carbine was seeing play. Well, the Aikilos SMG can also produce Warmind Cells, but most would argue that this is overall the best of the Seraph weapons. A 750 RPM archetype with SMGs means that it has actually pretty decent range and it's capable of slapping enemies up close, kills very fast, even in higher level content. We're talking Grandmaster style content. But seriously, if you're using the Aikilos SMG and one Warmind Cell mod, and it pretty much it doesn't matter which one, you've got a cracked PvE loadout right there, just with those two things for a huge majority of content. I think another factor helping this weapon is that the Deepstone Crypt raid takes place for the most part at pretty close quarters, and so an SMG is perfectly viable within those encounters, and again, the Aikilos is pretty much the best SMG for PvE. But it's time to move on from there to the number two slot, and here, we have the Fallen Guillotine Legendary Sword. So the Fallen Guillotine is absolutely fantastic. It's another holdover from the previous season, although it's actually dropping again this season. And if you get even a remotely good roll, so I have the, what's considered the God Roll of Relentless Strikes plus Whirlwind's Blade. So you strike, 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 get Whirlwind's Blade up, and then you heavy attack for a ton of damage, but, you can also get surrounded on this thing. Tireless Blade to get ammo back for getting heavy attack kills honestly isn't that unreasonable. I think you can even get Vorpal on this thing. It's hard to get a bad roll on the Falling Guillotine. And the fact that it's power attack where you spin around, this is the only sword uh, that currently has that option, means that not only is it doing pretty much more damage than normal against bosses and so on, the spinning attack is fantastic for damage output, but it's also fantastic for ad clearing. If you spin around, any ads near you are going to die. Whereas traditionally, you have the adaptive frame swords, which have the heavy attack of the big uppercut, which doesn't spread its damage over as wide of a radius. So you can't be as good for ad clearing or boss DPS. So, swords are super in the meta right now for PvE. The Fallen Guillotine can cheese Riven. It's fantastic. No wonder to see it on this list. But, moving on from there, we actually have one more. At the number one slot, we have the Heritage Legendary Kinetic Shotgun. I am actually kind of surprised to see this raid weapon at number one, especially ahead of the Fallen Guillotine. But now that I think about it, it really does make a lot of sense. Firstly, the Heritage is absolutely cracked out of its mind. Arguably, this is the best weapon of this entire season of Beyond Light and Season of the Hunt. The reason being is because, well, like we talked about with the first and last out, slug shotguns are producing an incredible amount of damage. And because of that, the Heritage combined with the first and last out is the overall most desirable loadout 
for the final boss fight of the Deepstone Crypt, but the Heritage can get that reconstruction perk so it can double its magazine size. That combined with a faster fire rate uh, from Assault Mag means that the damage output you're putting up with the Heritage is just mind boggling. So even just by itself, it's phenomenal in, well, higher level content if you wanna kill a champion very quickly, if you're DPSing bosses in strikes, if you're doing whatever, the heritage is probably gonna be fantastic. But honestly, I think the reason it's so high on the list is because it's kinetic. We don't actually have a lot of great options for kinetic shotguns. The other really best option is the perfect paradox, which comes all the way from Season of Dawn and you can't even get anymore. And if we take a look back at the other weapons on this list, the Aikilos, the Gnawing Hunger, the Trusty, Prosperity, those are all energy weapons. So if you wanna use an Aikilos SMG, you have to use a special in the kinetic slot. What's the best kinetic special? Probably the heritage. That's why you see it so high on the list. Guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.